The next storyteller is from the district of Kiloglin, the parishes of Beaufort, Castlemaine, Glenbay, Kiloglin and Milltown, the area rep there is. Uh, and the storyteller is the inimitable Edzo Crowley, sometime actor, writer, publican, member of the Kiloglin Archive Society. And he has two stories for us. The sign which relates from being a publican working behind the bar when they used to talk. He tells me there's no conversation in pubs anymore. So the first story is based on a wake held in a house in Glenbay a hundred years ago. And the second story, the running race in the middle of Ireland, another public house story. For Edzo Crowley. Two stories that I heard when I was a publican in Kilardin that I retired from that business in 2005. And I was 20 years at it. And I had a lot of stories told outside the counter while I was inside the counter. So I'm going to tell one of them stories anyway that I heard from a great and loyal customer of ours at the time. His name was Michael C. Hearn. And he told a story that I'll refer to as the sign. Now, there was an old woman in Dinbear Parish one time in the townland of Bell in the Killer. She never married. She was elderly and she had fallen into bad hilt. All her siblings had left Ballinacilla years previous and gone away to America and England and they didn't leave their sister short at home. She was well looked after. She got parcels and she got dollars and everything and she was a generous kind woman to her neighbours. In any event, she lived in a nice two-roomed thatched house. Well kept, whitewashed, nice garden, and roses round the door, as they say. But in any event, today, the woman, she passed away after a period of ill health, having left her instructions with her kindly neighbours as to how she was to be sent off. So anyway, as I said, she wasn't shot of a bob, so everything was well attended to. She was laid out. It was a two-roomed house. The room above, at the back of the fireplace, and the room below. There was a loft as well in the room below. So anyway, the work was organised and the old woman was laid out in the room above. Well laid out, lovely stuff covering the bed and there was oil lamps and candles and everything and all the neighbours gathered in for the week. All the women, as was the custom at the time, went from the room above and they gathered around the bed very respectfully. And they were saying rosaries and litanies, and generally speaking, and there was paid cleaners there because it was a custom at the time for people to turn up and wakes to were cleaned and all and the rest of it. But anyway, the obsequies were going on. It was getting dark, and the next thing it was observed a mouse on top of the carpet. <laughs> so anyway. You can understand how it gave cause for a bit of alarm. There was gasps, and there was a person there, and she said, oh God, she said, a mouse on top of a corpse is a great sign that the bereaved has gone straight up. <laughs> and another woman that was around the bed, she said, ha, ha, ha. I don't know, she said. I heard it said that if there was a mouse appeared on top of a corpse, um, she might have to toughen for another while. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there was always the other person did with devilment. And I said, <laughs> God knows. I hadn't it said it was a bad sign to see a mouse on top of a corpse. Maybe it is down, she's gone. <laughs> so the next thing, anyway, someone said, Would you go down? Someone to the room below. Where are the men? Where are the men were in the room below? with clay pipes, smoking tobacco, pinches of snuff, and drinking bottles of porter and whatever else. So someone went down in here and they said, there's a man sitting inside in the fireplace below. One of the old women said, his name is Cahill, and he's the oldest man in this parish. Go down and tell Cahill what's after happening up here, and ask him, is it a sign? So the next thing, the woman went down in here and she, the men saw her coming and they're quieting. And she went straight towards the fireplace because there, sure enough, was Cahill sitting inside in the fireplace, warming and keeping his bones. He sat up and she said to him, 
مستر که هر چی هستی، آن شی تو هرتم داشت و آیا از این سایت، تزا سایت آرایت سس که هل، هایل تلو گاو بک اپ تو در روم باف، آن تلو تزا سایت د درند گود کتن داوس. Michael C. told that story that with a group of customers that used to call in on a regular basis for five evenings a week, kind of a bad room story. The next one is a bad room story as well that was told under similar circumstances. And I refer to Michael C. as well in so far as he was a man that used to leave a book of poetry inside the counter, Patrick Gallon. And it was no notice for Michael C. in the event of there being a crowd in the bar to request the book of poetry Go up towards the fireplace and open a page and start reciting. And he'd get great attention. And on another occasion, we might get a busload of tourists coming back from Killarney for entertainment. And the great balladeer, Brendan Moriarty, would keep him entertained singing. And Michael C. would go up and recite for him the ballad of Kate Finucan. And the tourists just to enjoy that. The other next story, the second one I tell again, came from the conversations around the bar and it was about a running race in the middle of Ireland. There was a, a, this story of this race was held between the two world wars, when the, the, the cars were scarce enough and the roads were not great. And there was a big running race held in the middle of Ireland one time for young girls from every county in Ireland. The girl that was representing Kerry came from South Kerry and she left her house in South Kerry on a Sunday morning when a hired car, a hackneyed car, with a driver and a man from the committee, and they hid off for the middle of Ireland from the running race. It was the worst day that ever came, with rain and thunder. And uh, they got to the middle of Ireland in here, and the race was held, and only two people turned up for the race. <laughs> the Kerry girl and the Cork girl. The 32 counties of Ireland, the running race. The Cork girl won it. The Kerry girl had to go home in the hired car, the hackney driver and the committee man. And she landed back to her house that night and she met her father going out the door down to the pub. It was a crossroads in South Kerry. And he said, well, get there, he said, how did you get on today against the counties of Ireland, the 32? I came second dead, she said. <laughs> and he said, God bless you, my darling girl, I'm proud of you. I'd be going down now to the pub and I'd be boasting about, he said. And he, and he had to go away upstairs or go in now to bed for us that half the road long day and have a good rest. And, I, and he was turning to go and he just as an afterthought, get the and he says, where did the cop girl come? And that girl said, she came second last dead. 